Hello ladies and gentlemen, I am Borderwise and welcome back to From the Depths. And more specifically, welcome to the APS Categories tutorial, I guess you could call it. Now the reason this is going up is because someone in the comment section, by which I mean a someone called Joey5537, hey Joey, how's it going, asked me to do a tutorial in Advanced Cannons. And there's a problem with me doing that, it's that uh, Advanced Cannons aren't my specialty, I am hardly a genius at making them, but I know enough of the basics to just kind of give you lovely people a rundown of the four main categories of turret. If you, like, leave out ammunition and all that stuff, this is just how the turret itself is put together. Or the gun, I should rather say. You don't have to stick on a turret, although it is highly recommended. So you see you have these four here. There's the guns, that's our turret test platform. And over here is our unsuspecting target. And yes, it's a marauder. No one can resist shooting at these things. It's just so much fun. So we'll start off with... Well, I'll start with showing the ammo you, we're using. Using just kind of regular high explosive ammo. This one is... Essentially, it's four slots of gunpowder. Three lots of high explosive, inertial fuse. And this smaller one, gunpowder, inertial fuse, explosive warhead. It's just... It's bog standard ammunition. It's just good all around. And so, we are going to start left to right, or if you're looking at it the other way, right to left, with this gun here. And this is the simplest kind of advanced cannon you can make. It's a direct input feeder. And what that means is you have ammo inputs on the firing piece itself, and the ammunition just goes, well, straight into the, I guess, the firing chamber, you could call it. And from there it fires, and from there it reloads, and blah blah blah. So all you need is, like, the firing piece, the mantlet, inputs, the barrels, and all this stuff, the gauge increases and coolers and all that jazz. And that's it, really. And there's a number of benefits to making a gun like this. Like, this is actually the kind of advanced gun I use more often. Like, quite a number of my designs use these. Like, for secondary weapons, I pretty much use direct input exclusively. Mostly because they're very simple to make. They're quite cheap. They are a lot cheaper than these other much larger more complex guns over there and they're also rugged because the shell that's in the firing piece is not explosive or at least the explosion is contained so this thing is loaded and it is loaded with a reasonably hefty shell if you do this there is no big problem if you do that with uh, say this one over here you have what we in the business call a serious issue. So, we don't want that. So, direct input is a lot more rugged and durable than... Stop that. There we go. And now, stupidly, I have to wait for all these damn things to reload, but that's okay. That is A-OK. -okay. Are we done yet? Almost. Lovely. So, is this thing in fact loaded? Yep, it is loaded, and so if we turn this on right now, you can see this just... It fires. Boom. Did it actually hit the Marauder? I think it missed. Now, the major downside of this is it is slow to fire. So, I haven't actually tweaked this as much as I should have, but uh, the load time for this particular shell is about 62 seconds, which means... This gun, at its fastest, can fire about once every 15 seconds. Actually, slightly slower than that. However, is that one actually going to hit? Nope, it missed. And this is what's painful about that, is like every missed shot is a real kick in the gut. Oh yeah, and this one is also a little bit bigger whoops, than the other ones. And I just remembered it is not the right size. They're meant... I should really do this like off camera, but eh, what are you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? So, very slow firing. This one, at best, about ugh, once every 15 seconds, not good. Particularly if it misses. Oh, it did manage to tickle the marauder a little. Let's see what it did. Let's see what just one of those shells did. It blew a neat little hole in the side there. That's very nice. 
Alright. Okay. So! And did I mention this thing's cheap? If you go to the load subject, this is the diff demo, it's around like 3,000 resource. Compare that to the next cheapest, which is this one, and the, having like a regular proper advanced cannon with order loaders and ammo clips and all that stuff is roughly twice as expensive as this. But there's a reason you'd want to do that, so let's move on to the order loader one. And the only really difference between this one and this one is this one's a bit taller and it has auto loaders jammed underneath it. Now, each one of these auto loaders holds one shell and it just, well, it's basically jamming more shells into the thing so it can load quicker. And benefit to this is it's really simple to make still. You just, well, you just stick a whole bunch of auto loaders like bit below deck, make sure that it's nice and safe from anything being directly at directly hitting it and away you go and you'll notice the red text here if an auto loader doesn't have any clips attached to it it's basically it takes 50% longer to load a shell into the gun which is uh, why you don't want to perhaps do this all the time but enough of that I'll show you just how this one fires so auto loader boom 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 I want you in my room Much better rate of fire. In fact, I think uh, the Marauder's going to die from this. If it doesn't, that'll be really weird. And it's AI dead. Lovely. So that's a pretty respectable rate of fire. But! Ah, dang it. Eh, quickly, before it loads again. So it's reloading. And once... An autoloader only cannon runs out of shells, it takes a freaking long time to reload. Because, well, it, that extra 50% actually makes a really big difference. So if you go here, this is the shell it's using. Expected reload time from clip, it's a 400mm gun, about 30 seconds. That's with clips. So if you don't have clips, it takes about 45 seconds for each autoloader, which means once this thing is emptied, it's around, ooh. 40 seconds, 30 seconds before it can reload again. Because from the first one, it fires for, I don't know how long, I wasn't exactly timing. I'm not scientific enough to do tutorials like these, I think. Oh well. Anyway, it takes a while to reload again. But... Yeah, so that's one way to do it. And by the way, these are perfectly, well, pretty much all these guns are viable, that's the point. Like, if you have a gun that's firing slow anyway, you just... Go to it and you set the max fire rate here, just so you can get a nice steady rate of fire, and auto loaders on themselves could work fine. It is a little bit pricey though. You compare this one to the next one, so that's the auto loader, 6,990. Compare that to the next one, it's about a thousand bucks less. And the next one is auto loaders with ammo clips. And this is the one I possibly did not do the least. I could have jammed. Easily jammed more order loaders in here, which is why when we spawn in another Marauder way over there and we turn it off, and when we turn this on, fires exactly the same rate because it has just as many coolers, but you'll see it stops firing sooner. That's because it has less order loaders and, well, things are actually loading the gun. However, the downtime between volleys is a lot better because it's 30 seconds for each autoloader, not 45. And that actually makes a big difference. If you just wait here for a little while, you see, like, you probably... Well, there's a video, there's, there is a time counting down right on the bottom of the screen right now. So you can just follow that, wait for it... There you go. So that is quite a bit quicker and... That makes a bit of a difference if you want a gun with a really fast rate of fire. Because it just means you have to balance the amount of autoloaders and the amount of ammo clips in order to make sure that each ammo clip is... Well, to make sure each autoloader is loading as fast as possible. And you have enough of them just to keep the gun firing. So, we're going to turn you off right there. That Marauder is uh, in pretty bad shape, so we'll spawn in another one. It's fun shooting Marauders. It's just everyone's favorite punching bag. So now, 
That was a pretty reasonable, firing a reasonably big shell. I think that's a... What is that? I think that's a four meter... No, it's a, th it's a three meter, apparently. Yep, so... One, two, three. Okay. Now, we get to the fourth and final category of advanced cannon, which is the belt feeder. And this is... Actually... <laughs> one of the most more broken things in the game, really, because... If you go here, you look at the shell loading speed modifiers, a belt-fed loader loads about five times as fast. So in less than, in about one-fifth of the time as a regular loader. So, on here, and this is the tiny little shell it's using, it uh, expected reload time for clip is about 18 seconds. It's about one-fifth of that, which is less than four seconds. So, belt-fed loaders, even with uh, quite a large shell, 400 millimeters, it fires very, very quickly. Particularly if you are uh, like me and you really overdid the coolers on this thing. So, to give you an idea just how fast these things fire... Now, I'm not exactly sure how many rounds per minute that is, but it is a lot. And loads really quickly. Again, this is not a perfectly optimized gun, because ideally, you don't want pauses in between fire like that, just because, eh, it just means it throws off the timing for the gun. You want it to be shooting at the opportune moment, like where the enemy is like coming at you in a straight line, where the enemy is actually standing still, all that kind of stuff, and if it fires slowly, like certain guns I can mention, it's more likely to miss the perfect opportunity to land a shot, which is annoying. It's just kind of how the targeting system works in this game. So, belt-fed autoloader. Very effective. Why would you use anything else? Well, first off, you will notice that uh, these ammo clips are 1 meter by 1 meter, as opposed to this one, which is 1 meter by 4 meters. You can only stick 1 meter shells in a belt-fed autoloader, and that really limits how fast and how powerful and how accurate these belt-fed guns can be. They're actually best done with like smaller gauge shells, so like medium to small, rather, rather than this huge 400 millimeter monstrosity right here. It also means that you require less coolers for them, which just drops the cost of the gun even more. But I'm getting distracted, so one meter only, and also this is a disadvantage, but it's a disadvantage that I found a workaround to, and that is you will notice, like, hovering over here, it says that this is in the firing state, and we'll wait 60 seconds after firing stops to enter the loading state. And we'll enter loading state if the clip is empty. What that means is that a belt-fed autoloader, once it's depleted its ammo clips, incidentally, these things only work with ammo clips, you can't really have direct input versions of that. It just kind of doesn't work. I've tried it, it just... it just... nah. It just does not work as well as, like, it hypothetically could. But in any case, so, once this clip is empty, and that's holding three shells, this thing goes into a loading state, and it'll stay in that loading state until it's fully loaded again, so when three shells get popped in again. Now, if you build this thing symmetrical, and say you have one belt-fed loader, and you have a whole string of clips attached to it, there can be a lot of downtime between it firing and it loading. But not in this case. You'll notice that I have done a kind of spiral here, and it's the same thing I've done with this, although it works very less well with regular ammo clips and loaders. You will notice I've done a kind of spiral here, and what that means is that one, two, three, these three loaders have much smaller clip reserves than the ones further in, which means they get emptied faster. So this has three shells, so this thing will pop three shells into the gun, then load. It's got three loaders attached to it, so it reloads pretty much instantly. And while this thing's reloading, it's got much... These much larger clips are keeping these things sustained. It's possible... I've possibly gone a bit overkill with the... With the amount of belt feeders in this, actually, because it's way... It's a little bit much, maybe. Like, if you drop the firing rate a bit, you could get away with less. But... What the upshot of this is, because if you stagger the ammo belts like this, you end up with a gun that pretty much never stops firing. I've made a modified version of this and stuck it on a ship, and the thing can... 
I've never seen it stop. It's just, it loads like almost as far, well, it loads just as fast as it can fire, so it never stops. Which is a little bit broken, because remember, this shell might be a little bit small, but it's 400 millimeters. It does almost 2,000 explosive damage, and it's firing, well, this one has a lot of coolers, and I don't have firing restrictions on it, but the one on the ship fires at least about one and a half shells every second, so about two every three seconds, I guess you I guess you could call it, so it's impressive to say the least. And in fact, I will show you that ship right now. It's a real hoot. And let's spawn into something a little bit more substantial. Jacob's Delight. A Jacob... Everyone's delights in the Jacob's Delight. So, get rid of that. Where is the Jacob's Delight? It's over here. And incidentally, I must thank... Who was it? I think, I think it was Sunday Lau who told me that an APS monitor, as in one little ship with a very big gun, is actually a very good idea and is quite cost-effective for... from the depths. Like, I thank you for that because that's pretty much what this little ship is. It is a monitor, and quite a fast, annoying one as well. It does need to load, though, which is, uh, less than good. This is the Elipid, or Lapid, I forget how you pronounce that. So, pairs are off. And so is the UI. So it does have to load for some stupid reason, I'm not a fan of that. Also well shielded, also quite fast. Ammo in the back. Come on, start firing you, wazzock. So you see there, it's firing continuously. And against a soft target that's mostly made of wood, like the Jacob's Delight, it does a number on it. Whee! So hopefully this video has given you a bit of an idea of advanced cannons and just the basic categories. Like, there's a lot more to go into. They... Like, the ammunition is important to think about. Like, whether it's a rail gun or not, whether it's a secondary gun or a main gun. Like, whether it's got timed fuses, whether it's, like, explosive or kinetic, or even, like, EMP or frag. But that'll have to be saved for another video, so it's just four basic categories, direct input, autoloader only, uses ammo clips, or uses belt fed. And that's main differences, really. So I'm just going to leave you here with the Elapid just uh, tearing the Jacob's Light to bits. And you'll notice it hasn't stopped firing yet, and it never will. Like, it even, like, doesn't really run out of ammo very much, because it has quite a large reserve. So anyway... Thank you all so much for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. And I will see you next time in From the Depths. Farewell.